In English, iambic pentameter is arguably one of the most well-known metrical structures. Some of the most famous lines of poetry are written in it, such as, Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? But for Greek and Latin meters, the most famous was dactylic hexameter, in which epic poetry was written. It was adapted to other purposes on occasion, such as Lucretius's didactic philosophical work De Rerum Natura. Still, its most important use was in epic poetry. The name of the meter is informative. The hexameter tells us that there are six feet, which is the basic metrical unit, in each verse. The dactylic tells us that the dactyl is the basic structure of each foot. First, let us look at the dactyl. Like the I am in iambic pentameter, the dactyl signifies a metrical rhythm. This rhythm consists of a long syllable followed by two short syllables. For example, incipit or caesaris. You might be wondering why it's called a dactyl. The Greek word dactylos means finger. If you look at a finger, you'll notice that it is made up of one long and two short segments, hence the name. It would be a bit repetitive if every foot of dactylic hexameter were a dactyl, however. So there is another option for each foot. The poet can replace the two short syllables in the dactyl with one long syllable, creating a metrical rhythm consisting of two long syllables called a spondy. Examples include spero and eudex. Thus, in dactylic hexameter, the poet may use in each foot either a dactyl, like incipit, or a spondy, like spero. You will notice that a spondy takes about the same amount of time as a dactyl. For this reason, this switch does not change the total quantity of the line. Replacing two short syllables with one long syllable in poetry is called contraction. In essence, the dactyl and spondy are the building blocks that make up a verse of dactylic hexameter. Now, let us look at how these blocks fit together. Remember that a verse of hexameter has six feet. In practice, the first four feet can each either be a dactyl or a spondy. The fifth foot is almost always a dactyl, but occasionally it is a spondy for some poetic effect or emphasis. The sixth foot is slightly different. It is always two syllables, and the first syllable is always long. The second syllable can be either long or short according to the rules of syllable quantity, but it is always treated as long because it is at the end of the line and the reciter of the poem pauses slightly before moving on to the next line. Let us consider two lines of dactylic hexameter as examples. The first comes from the first book of Virgil's Aeneid, Tantai mole serat romanam condoregentem. How do we determine the metrical structure of this line? This process is called scansion, and it involves nothing more than considering syllable quantities. Let us begin. Tantai has two syllables, both of which are long, so the first foot is a spondy. The first syllable of molis is long by nature because of the long o, and the second syllable has a short vowel. The syllable is open because erat begins with a vowel, not a consonant, so the second syllable of molis is short. The first syllable of erat is short for the same reason, so the second foot is a dactyl. The third foot, like the second, straddles two words. Although the a in erat is naturally short, the syllable is closed because the t and the r are split between the syllables, so the syllable is also long. The first syllable of romanam is long because of the long o. Therefore, the third foot is a spondy. The fourth foot comprises the rest of romanam. The second syllable of that word, the first of the foot, is long by nature, the next by position. We expect the fifth foot to be a dactyl, and indeed it is. Condere has a first syllable that is long by position, and both subsequent syllables have short vowels and are open, making them metrically short. The sixth foot has a long first syllable, gen, 
and a next syllable that is treated as long, tem. We have successfully worked through a line of hexameter. You might notice that in several cases, the word breaks do not line up with the foot breaks. This is very common, and there are good reasons behind it, but such a discussion extends beyond the scope of this video. Now take a minute to try scanning the second verse of Catullus 116. Qui te lenirem nobis neu conarere. You may have noticed that every single foot is a spondy. The final e, although naturally short, is treated as long, as all final syllables in dactylic hexameter are. This metrical structure is so rare that this one line is the only example of it after Ennius. Dactylic hexameter, while a specific structure, permits a great deal of flexibility within it, something of which the poets took full advantage.